Okay, hello everybody. Accounting made simple. Let's get accounting figured out. Let's make it simple for all of those of you who just want a little basic knowledge, whether you're the small business owner, whether you're the person in school, whether you're the marketing person who wants to just be able to talk to his accountant at work. This is accounting made simple. Everything you need to know today will be on the balance sheet. It's the only statement that you need to understand is the balance sheet. You do not need to understand the P&L, the profit and loss, the cash flow, the statement of changes, accounts payable reports. You don't need to know. All of those are just reports. All you need to know in order to understand accounting to have any sort of tangible, intelligent discussion is the balance sheet. So let's make sure that you understand the balance sheet and let's get going into a simple example. We'll start off with a small business, a small business example. And this is gonna cover off almost everything. So here we have a balance sheet and we've got a balance sheet starting at May. You can see it's nothing. And then we're gonna do a balance sheet for June and then another one for July. So we'll go through two months worth of transactions. We'll do them right here on the screen. I'll show you what a balance sheet is all about and why it's important and why you need to understand this in order to understand accounting 101. So a balance sheet is composed of three sections, assets, liabilities, equity assets are things that you have that have some sort of value to you liabilities are things that you owe somebody else and equity basically is the money that you've made it's all on the balance sheet assets are usually debits liabilities are usually credits and you hope that equity is a credit because this is the money that you made so you want it to be a credit do you need to understand debits and credits a lot of people that i talk to as soon as i start talk, talking debits and credits their eyes glaze over they check out do you need to understand debits and credits? Yes, yes you do. You do need to understand debits and credits, but it's very simple. Don't glaze over and check out. A debit is positive, a credit is negative. That's all you need to know. That's it, positive, negative. It should be very simple and straightforward. Okay, so let's get into this. Let's start on, uh, let's start our business and it's day one and what do we do? We got nothing, so let's go get a, go get a loan from the bank. So we'll go to Bank of America, we'll go to Citibank and we'll get a loan and that loan is 800. Notice it's a negative, that means it's a credit. We need, notice down here I have a total of the entire column. The balance sheet now is not balanced because it's negative 800. So we need to balance this thing. So we got a loan for 800. That gave us some um, cash and let's say our cash is Oh geez, I don't know, $300. And let's say with that, we also got some inventory. So let's say we're in the business of manufacturing pens. We went out, we bought some rubber, some plastic, some metal, some ink, and we finished some pens and those pens are worth 500 bucks. Now our balance sheet balances, it's all zero. It all adds up perfectly. Start day one, we've got $300 cash, we got $500 inventory, fantastic. And we got an $800 loan from the bank, Bank of America and Citibank. Great, so that was day one. Super, not so hard. Okay, let's make some inventory. It is day two. We are making some inventory. So when we make some inventory, we gotta go and buy some more rubber, buy some more plastic, buy some more ink, and that's 10 bucks worth. And 10 bucks is cash, so that's out the door. Cash, credit, inventory, debit, all adds up to zero. Beautiful, the accounting world is uh, is working, the universe is unfolding as it should. Let's move on, day three. We are gonna sell 100 pens. And well, let's say that this is day 15, we're halfway through the month, we're gonna sell 100 pens. But these people that we're selling the pens to aren't gonna pay us right away. So we're gonna have an accounts receivable. We They owe some money to us. And let's say we sold, let's say $83 worth of pens. So we have $83 that this person owes us. And then where do we stick that? Where's the other side? How do we get to zero? We're sitting at 83. Well, we got a thing called retained earnings. Oh, spooky retained earnings. Listen, retained earnings is simple. It's earnings, that's all it is. It's how much money did you make? Well, we sold pens, we got 83 bucks. So guess what? I'm gonna put down 83 down here. Fantastic, isn't that great? You know, we're adding up to zero. Those pens cost us they cost us money, it was in our inventory. So the pens cost us, I don't know, let's say they cost us $37. So we got rid of $37 worth of pens and we sold them for 83. So we're taking $37 out of our inventory. That is a cost of sale, $37. Net, we made 46. 
We sold them for 83, it cost us 37 to make, and so we made 46 bucks on the sale of those 100 pens. That's it, now we're still lining up to zero, everything's great, the universe is unfolding as it should. We are gonna collect some money on day 29 because those people that owe us, maybe we sold them to our mom and our dad, they owe us $83, they haven't paid us yet. And let's say they're not gonna pay us the whole thing, they're gonna give us 80, so we're gonna get 80 in cash and we're gonna take 80 out of accounts receivable. We all add up to zero again, and that's it. That's our first month, done, fantastic. Here we are, the balance sheet at the end of June. What do we have? We have cash of $370. Where'd most of that cash come from? Well, most of it came from our loan, and then we actually made some money when we sold, so that's where it came from. We have $3, mom and dad still owe us, they only paid us 80, maybe they didn't have the other three on them, so they still owe us three. We have inventory of $473. We, you know, made some inventory at the beginning. We, you know, made some more and then uh, we sold some. And so we're left with $473. We still have our loan of $800 to Bank of America and Citibank. And we made $46 when you add it all up. That's where we are. That's our balance sheet. It's, it's all today. That, that's where we are right now. Our balance sheet explains the health of the company and what's happened over its history, over its entire history. That's why the balance sheet's so great. So it all is up to zero. That's the end of month one. Simple, straightforward, nice and easy. Okay, so let's move on to month two. Let's do some advertising. Advertising. Okay, so advertising on day one of month two. We spend some money on advertising. So 100 comes out of our cash. Where do we put that? Well, it's an expense. So we put 100 down here. And that's an expense, great. Okay, so then we got a payroll. All right, payroll, super duper. So payroll, day two, 150 in cash. We pay some uh, our employees, 150 of payroll expense. Great, that goes retained earnings. That's earnings, that's a negative earnings, it's it's bad. We're, well, not bad, but we're paying we're paying money out of the company. Utilities, let's say day 15. Okay, $25 for utilities. That's hydro, that's water, and we've got more expenses. 25, okay, that's retained earnings. Our earnings is going down. Okay, let's make some money here. Sell 200 worth of pens on day 16. Love day 16. Okay, so what happens here? We have, let's say $167 of sales come in. So let's put $167 down here in our retained earnings. And then we have a cost of sales. So our inventory, you know, costs money. Money went out of inventory. We actually got rid of pens. Let's say that got depleted by $73. Okay, 73. And let's put that down here. Now, the reason I'm separating these things is just, you know, they're all in retained earnings, that one line, but I'm just separating them so that you can see them nice and easy. So that made us $94. Wonderful. The universe is unfolding as it should. And we're all adding up to zero. And let's just do our last transaction. So we have some payables on day 29. So let's say we went out and we bought a printer. Okay, we bought a printer. That is a asset. That's a capital asset. And when we went to Staples, we bought the printer and it was $255. But we haven't paid for it yet. Staples is going to invoice us and we'll pay for it, you know, 30 days from now or something. So we have an accounts payable to Staples of $255. It adds up to zero. Again, boom. Debits, offset, credits, adds up to zero. Where are we at the end of July? We've got cash of $262. We still have mom and dad that owe us three. We have inventory of uh, 400 because we've sold some. We've got our printer of $255. We still owe Staples $255 for it. We have our loan, we haven't paid any of that down. And we've actually, oh shoot, we've lost money. Our debits actually exceed our credit, so we've lost money. How do we lose money? Well, advertising, payroll, utilities, that all added up. We've actually lost $135. Uh, and that's, that's what our balance sheet, that's it. That is the balance sheet in a nutshell. It shows you everything at a glance. Every single balance sheet, you go onto the web, you look up a company's balance sheet, it basically looks like this. It's three sections, assets, liabilities, equity. It shows you what you have, what you owe, and the money that you've made. That's it, that's why you only ever need to really understand the balance sheet and you've got everything. The balance sheet contains every single transaction that happens in a company. No other report and accounting does that. The balance sheet does, and that's why the balance sheet is perfect for everything, perfect for any discussion that you have with any sort of business professional or accountant. You just need to understand 
When I'm thinking about a transaction, you're only usually talking about one transaction anyway. How does the transaction work? Think in your mind, assets, liabilities, equity. Where do I, where do I plunk the, the things that we're talking about? If I have money come in, where does it go? Is it an asset? Is it a liability? Make sure that your transactions in your mind offset each other and you can talk to anybody. Does it take some time to get used to it and get quickly, get quick at doing that? Yeah, it does, but think in this framework and no other framework and you will be fine. The other framework that's popular out there is T-accounts. T-accounts suck big time. T accounts are the worst thing ever. T accounts get crazy. So let's let's just take our balance sheet and do a T account for, let's say this cash at June 30th. So we had three transactions that's happened in cash, 310, 80, which we've just gone through. So you would take, okay, first of all, let's just do this. Let's just take, uh, what? why do we call it a T account? Well, if we're looking at cash, we do this. I'll just draw some borders here for the T account and Boom, there's the T. That's why they call it a T account. The T account has debits on the left, credits on the right, and it looks like a T. So that's why they call it a T account. That's that's the magic. Okay, so we had 300, we had negative 10, and what was our other amount? We had 80, 80. Okay, so we put our debits on the left, our credits on the right. When we add them up, it's 370. Okay, great, that's 370, that's where I am. I don't know what transaction these were. I don't know if it was a sale or a loan or the money coming in or I made more inventory. It's just a little blob of numbers. Like, it's terrible, it doesn't tell me anything. And where it gets really complicated is when I start trying to say, okay, let's just do this. So 300, 500, 800, this, this day one, and put that into account. So we had inventory of 500 and we had a loan of negative 800. So as you start to go through day two and day three and day four, and you put all these things into these T-accounts, these T-accounts start to get huge. And you see all these transactions, you don't know which one relates to another. How do I know that the 300, 500, 800 relate from this? I don't, maybe it's the 80 and 500 and 800. Like this, it starts to get out of control. And all these T-accounts, you'll have enough T-accounts in a, in a very small company to fill this page easily and maybe another one and a big company, it's ridiculous. And it doesn't tell you anything. Everybody knows debits on the left, credits on the right. Who cares? It doesn't mean anything. T accounts are designed to confuse you. Stay away from anybody who's trying to train you using T accounts. It is not helpful at all. Put everything that you think of in accounting in this framework. Assets, liabilities, equity, put your debits and your credits in, in your mind, and you will be able to understand where everything goes and you'll understand how it impacts your company because you'll be able to think in this manner. Okay, that's enough about T accounts. Let's dive a little bit further into the balance sheet and just finish this sucker off. Okay, so the balance sheet, let's drill into each one. Balance sheet details, so cash, what do I have in cash? I have $262 in cash. Cash is really just your bank account. Let's say your bank is TD and $262. So that's all, when you drill into your balance sheet and you drill into that cash account, you all, that's what you'll see. You'll see your bank name, okay, it's TD, and you have $262 in there. Great, fantastic. Okay, so look what's next? You drill into accounts receivable, double click on that, and we end up with, let's say mom and dad owe us some money. So mom owes us one, dad owes us two. If you, when you drill into accounts receivable, that's what you'll see. You'll see mom owes you one, dad owes you two. It drills in and it gives you a report, which basically says accounts receivable. Mom owes you one, dad owes you two. And it adds up to three. That's the accounts receivable report. Great. Then you go to inventory. Okay, inventory. What was our inventory? Inventory was 400. So let's say in inventory you have, you know, some rubber, you have some, uh, some plastic, you have some finished pens. And when you add all that up, you know, it adds up to, 400 so you know that's that that's what your inventory report will look like okay so let's just get rid of that move that there capital assets you've got we've got our printer our printer is worth 255 dollars so when you drill into capital assets that guy that's what you'll see you'll see a printer 255 dollars so you'll know that that's the printer and capital assets when you drill into your liabilities accounts payable who do we owe well accounts payable we owed staples for the printer so that's Staples, we owe $255, should show up as credit. And then our loans, well we've talked about our loans, our Citibank and Bank of America, 
and let's say one was 500, one was 300. Let's just make those negative as well. Minus 500, minus 300. So that's, you know, 800, and that's what you'll see when you drill into this. Okay, here's the magic, retained earnings. When you drill into retained earnings, what do you get? You get a P&L. This is where the P&L comes from. It comes from the balance sheet. So you get revenue, you know, cost of sales, expenses, and then you get net earnings. So our revenue, what is our revenue? Let's go back to the balance sheet. Our revenue was 83 and it was 167. Boom, $250. Our cost of sales was what? It was 37 and it was 73, 110. Our expenses were what? They were the advertising, they were the payroll, uh, they were the utilities, 275 net, add it all up. Exciting times, here we go, excited all up. Ah, oh, we lost $135. So a lot of people would write it like this, they'd put say, earnings would be in brackets and a loss would be no brackets. So that's how they would show it. If this was a negative, that would actually be earnings. And since it's not, it's actually a loss. So a net loss of $135, that's our equity section. Our balance sheet has already showed us all of this, but when we drill in to retain earnings, that's what we get. We actually get a P&L. And that's where everybody focuses a lot of their time on understanding how much they made in any current year. They're drilling into retained earnings and they're looking at a P&L. So that is the balance sheet. That is the power of the balance sheet. You need to put everything that you're thinking of in terms of accounting into a balance sheet perspective so that you can understand how it impacts your business and how it impacts the health. The balance sheet is your entire business at any point in time. That's why it's fantastic. Hopefully you learned something here today. Hopefully this was uh, useful. If you have any question, drop them in the notes below. I'll try and get to them. Um, but other than that, this is part one, simple balance sheet and uh, tune into the next video and we'll dig a little deeper into uh, accounting, but this is all you really need to know, Accounting 101. Thanks.